Dungeons and raids are a pinnacle part of an MMORPG experience, banding together in small and large groups to take down a common foe while stealing their loot for you to forever wear upon your body. At least until the next boss when something better drops. In Ashes of Creation, this doesn't change. Although not front and center compared to the massive node and castle sieges that will be major events in the game, raiding still has its place within the world. But what sets it apart from the majority of MMORPGs is the fact that dungeons and raids will be open world. Not every single one, but upwards of 80% will have you fighting other players on your way to that boss. Obviously, Ashes of Creation is playing heavily into PvP, and this really adds to the risk versus reward structure that they are building, but will this system turn out to make raiding more of a headache than a fun challenging experience? Well, if you look into the designs of dungeons and raids, Intrepid is designing them to be massive in areas, with multiple pathways and multiple bosses to fight, almost in the sense that it will feel like a bunch of mini dungeons inside a massive one, where some will be designed around smaller groups whom only have 30 minutes to play with, and others that will need large raids and a few hours to take on, really giving you room to multiple raid groups at once within these. How exactly these dungeons and raids look though is really dependent on the node development, as nodes can unlock or lock dungeons along with change up the bosses, mobs, and loot tables depending on the story progression that particular node is going through at the moment. For example, a dragon could have attacked a node and took up its home in a nearby dungeon, but once killed, the node is happy again and makes room for a new story to progress and a new boss to take his place. But we aren't here to really talk about the features these raids have in this video. In the massive world of Vera, last we heard there would be 12 to 15 raid bosses throughout the planet. This is not including the dungeons throughout the world as well, but if you look back on that prime raiding experience you set out on in your favorite MMO, it's raid reset day and a lot of guilds on your server are waiting at the entrance of that raid for the rest of their party to take on that next fight. Some enemy players are there as well, causing a havoc of PvP while you continue to wait, but finally your raid can run into the safety of the instance zone to be alone to take on that boss. But Ashes of Creation has taken away that safety net of being an instance, and now you and all those other guilds are going in the same raid to take down the same boss with the PvP fights continuing as you progress. Not only that, but there is only one boss to take down between all of the guilds. Sure, there are different pathways and different bosses in the raid, so it might spread out a little, but if you're all going for that same end game boss, then you're gonna have to fight your way through. But what is Ashes of Creation doing to ensure this is not gonna be a massive headache for all parties involved? Well, starting with the loot tagging system, as of now, the system is based on damage done, but the first party to tag the mob will gain somewhere around 5-10% to advantage at start. At the end of the fight, the party with the highest damage done, including that bonus, will gain the looting rights. So if you're going into a fight with multiple guilds, you'll want to make sure you bring the highest damage dealing members in your raid party. For the groups who fought the boss and dealt less damage, well, better luck on the next boss because you get no loot, which kind of sucks and is going to be extremely frustrating for a lot of groups, but as I've said a hundred times, Ashes of Creation is not a casual game. It's not going to hold your hand, things are going to be challenging. The dungeons themselves also adapt to your previous fight, so if the boss was too easy for you, all of a sudden the raid has begun learning that, and the next fights will automatically be buffed and be more challenging, which could help phase out some of the other parties. Which is a really cool feature and gives more replayability in a raid, but we don't know how exactly this will work with multiple parties that are involved yet. At the launch of the game, I don't think it's going to be that much of an issue, as it will be later on. Yes, some people will double or triple up in dungeons, but the world is 1200 square kilometers in size with five different starting zones and the world is designed to get you to spread out. You're going to want to progress in a node that benefits you and your playstyle and not just have everybody run to the exact same locations. But at endgame when players are all geared up, the content is starting to grow stale and you've done all the raids and dungeons available, people are going to start looking for new content and this new content is locked behind nodes. So some guilds will team up, take out a node, unlock a new node with new dungeons, raids, and stories behind it, and everyone who's been looking for that new raid will probably head towards that zone to join in on that one that was just unlocked 
creating some massive PvP scenarios that could become extremely frustrating to those who just want to gear up. It'll be a slow start as players begin traveling across the map because this will take time, but eventually all of those guilds who want to take on that boss will have arrived and begin fighting each other and the mobs inside, potentially trying to prevent the other raids from downing the boss. Unfortunately, with open world raiding, there isn't much you can do to prevent things like this from happening. It's just part of the game. And it's not completely unheard of in other MMOs. A lot of MMO RPGs have world bosses, which have seen these massive PvP fest areas before, and it will be a big adjustment for a lot of people and turn a lot of people away from these features in the game. The corruption system will definitely help ease the pain of this as well, though, as people who are going to take down a boss probably aren't going to want to risk the gear drops or the huge durability and stat debuffs, but PvP focused guilds may jump in to further add to the chaos. How would you soften the blow of multiple guilds at once in an open world raid? Comment down below and if you are new to Ashes and have yet to create an account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can jump in on the forums, grab some cosmetic packs, or just be ready for when you can finally play Ashes. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.